know some people for whom the Four Noble Truths seem to be like this. Things are inconstant. That's the first one. Things are stressful. That's the second. Things are not self. That's the third. And I can learn to be okay with that. That's the fourth. Now those are not the Buddha's Four Noble Truths. But it's something you hear again and again and again. The Buddhist truths are very different. Stress, suffering, that comes down to clinging. There's a cause, which is craving. And there is a cessation through putting an end to the cause. And there's a path of practice that leads to that cessation, the Eightfold Noble Path. Now this is radically different, because that third Noble Truth is special. The Four Noble Truths are a value judgment. There's a craving that leads to suffering, and then in that Eightfold Path that leads to the end of suffering. Or the end of stress, there is desire. So you've got desires that are not worth following and desires that are worth following. And the ones that are worth following can take you far. As the Buddha said, we're practicing for the sake of something we haven't seen, for seeing something we haven't seen, for reaching something we haven't yet reached, for attaining something we haven't yet attained. Which is why the Four Noble Truths require a certain amount of conviction. We may see that, yes, when I hold on to things there is suffering, and the craving is the reason I hold on. And the path of virtue, concentration, and discernment seems like a good thing. But that third truth, that's the one you've got to take on conviction. But as the Buddha points out, conviction is a kind of wealth. Sometimes we don't think of it in those terms. We think that if you have faith in someone, and we've been through so many instances where we had faith in someone or conviction in some principle and it turned out not to be true, that we're afraid of having conviction. It seems to be putting us in a position of weakness. But you ask, what is the Buddha asking you to believe? He's asking you to believe that you do have it within your power to put it into suffering. It's something you can choose to do. And that requires that you assume that your actions do have an impact. You have choices. What you're experiencing right now is not totally determined by what came from the past. Now, this is something you can't prove. that old dilemma between freedom of choice and total determinism. There's no way you can really prove it one way or the other in terms of running experiments. But you can run a, a pragmatic exper thought experiment in your mind. What are you going to act like if you believe that everything is totally predetermined, say by your DNA or by the stars or simple physical laws? How are you going to act when there's a noble action that requires sacrifice? What would be your motivation for, for doing the, being willing to sacrifice to do something noble? If your life were at stake, what would what would you do? How do you how can you be sure that you would stick with the moral course, the honorable course? even if it meant you might have to lose your life. This requires assuming that things are not determined, this path that we're going to follow, because it does require a certain amount of sacrifice. But when I went to see a John Fuhrman the first time, I happened to ask him about rebirth, and he started out by saying, well, the only thing the Buddha has you believe in is karma. But when you get into karma, you realize it has to include rebirth as well.
because if you, your experiences are shaped by your actions, not everything you do in the present moment can explain why you're experiencing certain things. There's some things that come in from the past. And if your past actions had no impact on the present, then your present actions would have, have no impact on the future. So these things all go together, and they are a form of wealth. Again, we sometimes think if you're believing in things you can't yet see, it's very easy to be fooled. It's a position of weakness. But again, the Buddha says conviction is a form of wealth. It gives you energy to be willing to do things that otherwise you might be too lazy to do. It gives you the strength that you need in order to overcome your greed, your aversion, and your delusion. And it reminds you, death is not the end. For a lot of people for whom death is the end, the current pandemic is really cause for dismay. And of course there's dismay in the fact that so many people are dying. Now, there seems to be no end in sight. But when you realize death is not the end, it gives you the courage to keep on doing what you know is right, even in the face of overwhelming odds. Because you're being asked to have conviction in the fact that your actions have a power, and they're not snuffed out. These are good things to believe. Now, it is possible to come to know that they're true, but that requires that you take them on first as working hypotheses. Some people say, well, the Buddha didn't teach you anything that you can't prove for yourself, which is true. But the proving requires that you put a lot on the line first. Spend time being generous, observing the precepts. Spend time practicing concentration, developing discernment into the areas where the mind is less than honest with itself, taking these things apart. And you can do these things only if you have a certain amount of conviction. As the Buddha said, when you reach stream entry, your conviction is verified. In other words, it, it doesn't suddenly appear then. It's not the case that you were doubting, doubting, doubting all the time, and not willing to put anything out because of your doubts. And then suddenly you, you changed your mind. It's because you put in the energy that was required. And then you found that the results more than exceeded your expectations. By arriving at the deathless, you step out of space and time. And in stepping out of space and time, you begin to realize that time did not start, at least did not start for you at the date of your birth. It went way back. You may not know the details, but you do know that there was something that goes way, way back. Then you realize that you were able to reach that dimension because of your actions, the choices you made. That's how stream entry confirms or verifies your conviction in the principle of karma and verifies your conviction in the Buddha and his Four Noble Truths. You realize they really are true. They really are noble. Up to that point, you don't really know. As you think about it, it's like traveling to some place you've never been. It's going to require a lot of energy and a lot of time. You have to believe that that place is there. especially when you run into hardships along the way. And when you get there, the confirmation is, on the one hand, it is dependent on your conviction. But two, your conviction has not skewed your view so that you will see things that are not actually there. So if you want to 
go see Mount Fitzroy. You have to believe that Mount Fitzroy exists. Because it takes a long time and a lot of preparation to get there. But you get there, and you find that that's true. There it is. You've seen it with your own eyes. And it's not because you believed it that you will make it suddenly appear where it's not there. It's there. There's so many things in life that are like this. The fact that the world is round. You tell this to a child. The child has no proof. But as you grow up, you discover that if, <clears throat> when you're going to fly from Los Angeles to Paris, say, you fly over Greenland. And if the world were flat, that wouldn't make any sense. But flying over to Greenland is faster than flying in a straight line, or what would look like a straight line on a flat map. There are a lot of things that you have to assume before you discover them. And the end of suffering is one of them. And you find that the, the actions you do, the good actions you do, are all that, and are all very good. You're asked to be virtuous. You're asked to be trained in your mind, have some control over your mind. You have to, you're asked to be very discerning about what's going on in the mind. All these are good things, and they don't save all their rewards for the end. They give you rewards all along the way simply that the reward at the end is of a totally different order. This is beyond your expectations. And so the conviction that allows you to get there, that is a form of wealth. The Buddha lists it as one of the noble treasures. And why do we gather wealth? Well, there are times when we're going to be meeting with hardships. We're going to be meeting with difficulties, and it's good to have some resources to fall back on. And conviction is precisely one of those resources that helps you get past a lot of difficulties. You think of the people in the past who had difficulties in their practice, but they were able to get around them. There's nothing in the human mind that the path is not equal to. It's just a question of, are we equal to the path? And the more inner wealth you have, the more you find that you actually are equal to the path. Of course, you're hearing these words, and these are words you have to take on conviction, if you feel that Conviction really is a wealth, a form of wealth, and you'll be able to find the extent to which they're true. If you don't, then you never really will know, because you will not have tested them. But conviction is what actually allows you to put them to the test. And to come out with a fair judgment of how true they are.